Hi everyone. Today we've got an action model from a Boston Grand Piano designed by Steinway and Sons. So very similar to the action involved in a Steinway Grand Piano. Now this is from a five foot one instrument, in fact identical to the piano behind me. So obviously as you can see when we say the action we're referring to the key, the dampers, the hammers, and all of the moving parts that connect it. Now there's actually over 10,000 moving parts inside a modern Grand Piano. So there's over 100 in every single individual key, which is incredible. So let's just take a look at the major portions of it, identify the pieces and how they work. Now obviously here on this end, we're taught, we have the key. That's the key top that we're seeing on top of this uh, arm. Now typically in quality instruments, the arm is made from either a maple or a spruce and that it makes it a very light but strong wood to allow for years and years of use. And then the key top itself, that's often either a plastic or a composite in higher end pianos. Traditionally and originally, these were actually ivory. That was actually a bone material. So if you have a vintage piano or you're shopping, you come across a used piano from the 40s or earlier, you may run into the original ivory key tops if the piano has been well cared for. A lot of older pianos, however, the ivory has been replaced with a modern day material simply so that you get a more aesthetically pleasing key top. Um, ivory would tend to chip, so older pianos you'll find chipped keys. Now, let's take a look down at this end of it, past the pulcrum, past the pivot point for the action. So when we move the key, we begin a series of movements on the escapement action. As we see the back end rise, we see the whip in raise, we see the jack raises, and we see the repetition lever move also. So let's see how that works in action. Okay. Now, the escapement action is what gives us that click feel that you're accustomed to on an acoustic piano and on high quality digital pianos. And that click feel comes from the jack here sliding off of this rounded piece of felt and leather. And that's called the knuckle because it's shaped just like a knuckle in your finger. And what happens is as we raise, obviously we're raising the shank, we're raising the hammer. But at some point, about two thirds of the way up, you're going to see the jack slip off behind the knuckle. And that's the click that we're accustomed to feeling. Why does that happen? Well, that allows for a much faster uh, repetitive motion, hence why we have the repetition hammer there. And then the, ha the hammer itself continues to move on its own momentum at that point to the string. That's why we can actually play very slowly and quietly and press a key and not get any sound on an acoustic piano because the key isn't moving fast enough to send the hammer all the way up to the string with its own momentum at that point. Now, in the escapement mechanism, there's a couple things that need to happen simultaneously. Take a look here at the drop screw and the let off button. Now, as we raise the action by pressing the key, we need to make contact with these points here and here simultaneously. In a properly adjusted piano, that happens. Now, what happens is that over time, as a piano ages, and we're talking about many, many years, is that the felt and the cushions wear down and it may need to be adjusted or replaced in order to have proper timing of the key. Now this is important because this is what allows the action to respond right. If it's not adjusted and if the materials are worn down in older pianos, the piano is not going to feel right. You're going to, the keys you're going to play and it's not going to respond appropriately. A couple more components of the action. Let's look down here at the end of the key. We have the back check and we have the under lever. Now the end of the key arm is going to make contact with the under lever at a certain point and that's going to raise the hammer. So let's see how that works. All right. Now, depending on the thickness and the material of this bushing here at the end of the key arm, the hammer may, uh, the, excuse me, the damper may move too early if this is too thick or too late if it's worn down which can affect the ringing sound of the piano. If the, ha if the damper doesn't raise at the appropriate time, the hammer might make contact before the damper is raised. So you're going to get a very thuddy sound. It's not going to be resonant. Or if the damper's raised too early, this piano will just ring and ring and ring and be very dissonant as you're playing lots of fast passages. All right, that's a, just a brief overview of the piano action in a Boston Grand Piano. Hope you found that interesting. Comment below, let us know what else you'd like to know about how piano works. Hit the subscribe button and give us a call at 901-325-6402. As always, thanks for watching.